Hello and welcome to CB Defense Today. I'm Jack Bunja, a public affairs specialist for the Army DevCom Chemical Biological Center. CB Defense Today is a quarterly interview program where we sit down with DOD experts and partners to discuss topics relevant to chemical and biological defense. In this episode, we'll be discussing a memorandum of agreement between the Center and the Army's Military Working Dog Program. This partnership has DEVCOM CBC providing narcotics training aids, technical knowledge, and scientific expertise to all military working dogs within the Department of the Army. In the studio today to discuss the program and partnership are Dr. Patricia Buckley, Deputy Division Chief for the Suburney Assessment at CBC, and Sergeant Major Vidiana Levaye, U.S. Army Military Working Dog Program Manager at the Office of the Provost Marshal General. Thank you, welcome, and I appreciate you both taking the time to be here today. Um, and Dr. Buckley, we're going to start with you, and we just want to know a little bit about how the center started to get involved with working dogs and the working dog program. So most of the work at the center that my group has been um, involved in involves detection. And as we were developing our research in that area, we've learned how sensitive the dogs are with their um, olfaction, like their keen sense of smell and the way that they're able to detect very low levels of things and, and pick out very specific things. And so we decided, um, especially when COVID hit, that there would be a way that we could help participate in the detection of COVID by utilizing that really keen sense of smell with the um, military working dogs. And to do that, you know, you guys have developed a few different systems, correct, to kind of aid in the training of those dogs to be able to detect those things? Yes, absolutely. So um, one of the first things that our group developed was um, what we call the TAD, which is a training aid delivery device. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to capture things that you want the dogs to be able to train on um, without exposing the dog to the actual item that they're smelling. And so it's a glass jar with a filter on the top that you can open the lid. And so then the odor comes out of the item that's within the jar. And so the dogs can then come and smell that odor, but they're never actually exposed to the item that they're smelling. That's fascinating. So, you know, this kind of really work, things like that, the center is uniquely positioned to really help support canine training, right? I mean, from... Absolutely. So um, here at the center, we have a lot of scientists who are um, really honing in on the uh, scientific data that can be captured while their dogs are smelling these things, like how much odor are they capturing? What are they actually being um, recognizing as they're doing their jobs? And so one of the other things that um, we developed, we worked with the spectroscopy group here at CBC. Um, they have inkjet coupons, which are actually like pieces of filter paper that you can print chemicals onto. And then we can take that coupon, put it inside the tad, and then that allows the odor to be released. And the dogs can then train on that odor without being exposed to any levels of um, compromising smells, you know, any, any of those different items. That's fantastic. A very unique training opportunity, I imagine, for the dog and for, for the programs in general, right? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that we've been doing as we've been testing these coupons, um, there is an event that's Army-wide called MISPIX, and they are looking to test different items that are um, in the late research stage, um, one of the higher TRL stages, to see if those items are actually practical for soldiers to use out in the field. And so we've been invited to participate. Last year, we went out to Fort Leonard Wood, participated in their uh, um, military working dog piece of that um, demonstration. And then this year, we've been invited to host that here at APG. Oh, wow. That's a great opportunity. That's fantastic. And, and Sergeant Major, so so your role in this is you're the program manager for the Office of the Provost General, Marshal General, correct? Yes, and so, so talk to me a little bit about, first, what your role is within that working dog program. So I'm the Army Military Working Dog Program Manager, and I have a civilian counterpart, Mr. Jimmy Blankenship. So we manage the overall Army program. Um, so anything, training, program, policy, modernization efforts, we oversee and manage. Okay. And so this training program, I mean, it's, it's very intense, right? So yes, can you give me just a little bit of an overview of that training program and the work that goes into preparing these dogs? Absolutely, sir. So our military working dogs are initially trained at Lachlan. The executive agent is the Air Force. It's a um, course where all services send their soldiers both two-legged and four-legged so the military working dogs are trained there on average it takes about 60 days to train a military working dog for patrol capabilities and then another 60 days for detection capabilities all of our army military working dogs are dual purpose 
Um, so it averages about 120 days. Once they qualify and graduate from Lackland, they'll go to their first kennel, and in the operational environment, we'll train them for whatever mission set they're going to be facing. Okay. So, so a lot of work goes in this, and the we talked earlier, I mentioned the agreement that we have, the MOA between you and the center. So talk to me a little bit about what that MOA is looking to add to that, to that training. So without DEFCOM CBC, we wouldn't have been able to, one, um, be able to train them because, again, we don't have, obviously, lab technicians. We're not able to develop those training aids. Um, they were able to, one, develop the training delivery device will assist us with that training initiative, and then also with the coupons that will also be able to help us with training those military working dogs on those drug threats. That's fantastic. So, you know, what's the significant goals that you're really looking to achieve with this partnership? Like, what are the milestones you're looking to work towards? So modernizing the overall MWD program, uh, equipment, research and development, um, being able to enhance the military working dogs capabilities to be able to provide a better asset, um, not just for law enforcement installation support, but for all Army operations, especially as we're looking into large scale combat operations. And then as Dr. Buckley mentioned, you know, MISPIX is uh, one of those valuable training exercises that allow you to really kind of put this to the test. And I know it's started already, so how's it been going? It's going phenomenal, sir. I think, honestly, it's assisting us with not just as senior leaders to identify our true um, capabilities within our military working dogs and their proficiency levels, but even as a handler, just to be able to recognize what your dog's capable of, you really start to have a better understanding of what they can do, and it also helps the handlers have more confidence in their military working dogs. And when I'm articulating to senior leaders and I'm explaining, hey, our military working dogs are now detecting in the milligrams, it's hard to put that in perspective. So when I say, imagine six grains of salt on the table, that's where our military working dogs are now able to detect and, and demonstrate their true capabilities on the value and the asset that they are going to be able to provide to those maneuver units. And that helps so much, right, in the field, yes, protecting both soldiers and the dogs, right? Correct. So once they are better trained, they can help you guys avoid possible threats. Yes, sir. Absolutely. That's fantastic. So this last question is for both of you, all right? <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about what are the next steps? You know, how are we looking to progress, you know, with this program? I can start with that if you want. So as our program develops, you know, one of the things we're looking at is with those coupons, we have the ability to test a lot of different scents, right? You can print whatever you want or whatever is able to be absorbed onto that filter paper. And so we're looking into different explosives. MISPICS right now is looking at um, explosives. And so we're working towards having additional training events where we can detect, get that level for each of the different explosives. And then we're also moving towards the drug testing, like Sergeant Major mentioned, and being able to have the scientists here that can work with that and be able to keep that safe and, and make that accessible to the handlers. That's fantastic. Anything else that you guys are looking to to move out immediately? In yes, the sir. Future? So for us, being able to modernize the program as a whole um, holistically, the relationship with them between DEFCOM, CBC, and the Army and Military Working Dog Program has assisted greatly because of that. Because of those working relationships, we've been able to participate in a lot of different research and development projects. The training aid delivery device is a game changer for the military working dog program. I mean, we can take that glass jar and now put it in complex environments, be able to, you know, submerge it underwater and still have the military working dogs detect that. Um, so it's really going to assist us with advancing not just our training, but just, again, operational uh, requirements that we have to meet as a military working dog program. That's fantastic. And then the printing of the inkjet coupons really allows it to be versatile and make exactly what you want the dogs to detect, right? Absolutely, and we're trying to add a little bit of the science behind it. Uh, Sergeant Major always laughs at us, but we can measure then what's called the headspace, which is the area between the physical item and where the smell is coming out of the top of that jar, and we can get a chemical signature and figure out exactly what the dogs are smelling and, and how much of that they're able to detect. Wow, which really allows you guys to set up, I would imagine, different SOPs for being able to Good. detect threats, right? That's true. That's fantastic. Well, thank you both. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Again, I want to thank Dr. Buckley and the Sergeant Major for joining me in the studio today. For CB Defense Today and the U.S. Army DEVCOM Chemical Biological Center, I'm Jack Bunja.